Hospital Port has pride and dignity. Stop the New World Order. Welcome to Herpanwo TV. Now, uh, today I'm taking on a little walk in the countryside, around nature, as you see. It's all right, I'm not trying to copy Slaxer's style. Well, only he can do that, you know. Um, what I'm basically doing is, you'll see, I've got something very interesting to, to talk to you about, which you'll um, see in a minute. Now, the place I'm at is it's the River Thames in Oxford. We call it the Isis. And, um, and if you want to follow it in Google Earth, um, you'll see this, is, this here is the River Cherwell, and you'll see there's this little island here. And there's the River Cherwell, and this is actually the confluence of two rivers, the Isis and the Cherwell. And um, that's significant, I'll come to that in a minute, to what, to what I'm about to tell you. Um, look at those birdies there. Yeah. Um, this here is the Oxford University boathouses. There's the boat sheds. I mean, each college has its own shed. There's another one over there. Um, and that's where the, uh, the, the, the racing boats are kept, these high-speed racing boats you see going backwards and forwards, almost 24-7 on this river. Um, and the students, uh, you know, you've got, to, you've got to be a student to join the, one of these boat clubs and, and crew one of these boats. Um, they're planning for the big bumps race in a couple of weeks, which is uh, the, major, the major sort of like race between the different colleges. Now, um, <clears throat> to recap slightly on the, um, on the previous video I did called The Go Ghost in My Bedroom, um, Slaxer, sorry, not Slaxer, oh yeah, um, a uh, Herpanwo TV viewer called Azure Glide, you know, who you see in the comments box, started talking about um, his own experience of paranormal activity and how it related to him through the Catholic faith. So look at that boat there. Go there fast. You know, because then no one's going to catch those guys. Sorry, there's a lot of distractions around here. Yeah, um, the Herpanwo TV viewer Azure Glide told me about the, how the Catholic faith and how it related to his family's experience of paranormal activity. Now, I'm from a Catholic family myself. In fact, well, I'm a lapsed Catholic. I'm... I used to go to mass and everything. Obviously, I'm not a believer now, but I, I was for many years through my youth, and not that my youth's over, of course. Um, but you know, if you do, during my younger youth, put it that way. Um, now, um, as far as the Christian Christianity goes, you, there's very very little acknowledgement of paranormal activity. In fact, you know, most uh, most um, sort of orthodox Christians you meet will not even talk about ghosts or UFOs or anything like that. You know, it's kind of almost kind of um, non-existent subject. Um, and, uh, you know, I mean, this is very, very often what I've found, even though you have vicars and priests who will perform exorcisms um, and they'll come around and they'll exercise them. I mean, I mean, the most famous example is probably the fiction, obviously that very, very frightening fictional movie, The Exorcist. Um, I mean, that doesn't match any real experiences, I hope. But, uh, you know, that's, that's a kind of example of where the Christian church gets involved in paranormal activity. Um, now, uh, and, and it's different with Islam. I mean, Islam has a very different attitude to paranormal activity. That, Christianity does. In fact, if you ask Muslims about it, if you know, go and ask uh, someone you know who's a Muslim and start talking about ghosts and things, and you'll find they will engage you in a quite uh, an intellectual conversation. You know, they they talk about what they call the jinn. Now, these are not demons in the same sense that the Christians talk about demons. These are something very different, um, and uh, they're much more akin to the in line with the sort of scientific aspect of the paranormal. Now why am I here? Why have I brought you to this spot? I suppose you're wondering. There's a lovely little spot on the river. Now, um, as you see here, it's, it's, well, it's a beautiful place. Maybe that's good enough reason. Um, I actually live just not far from here, just n right next to the river. Um, and I walk up and down this way all the time. Now if you're on Google Earth, and you, you see, if you go upstream this way, which is sort of northwards, just over that bridge there is this Oxford city centre, where all the universities and colleges and things are, all the historical stuff. 
You go down that way, you get to another bridge called Donington Bridge, and that's near where I live. Now, um, on Google Earth, you'll probably see that this stretch of the river between the boathouses and that bend there, where there's those other bridges, and if you can zoom in a little bit, um, there's a bend there with some more bridges, and there's that boat moored there. Okay, it's very, it's, it's a very, very stretch, long stretch, and it's pretty much there's no, there's no artificial light. Now, the reason I'm, I'm, the reason I'm saying is that because I had an experience here. I'll put a link in the description box to, to, to show you where I wrote an article on the Herpanmo blog about this. I had a very strange experience here a couple of months ago, late at night. Now, um, I'm, I'm not going to bring you up here late at night because it's impossible to film. Um, but uh, basically, um, I was walking, this was about probably 11 p.m., all right? You've got to imagine this place, this whole place, completely pitch dark. Totally dark. Stars above, or the moon, I can't remember if it was cloudy or not, I can't remember. Um, all clouds. Um, a couple of lights showing from the boat sheds. Um, basically, very, very dark. Why me? Look at that. I could do with one of them getting around. Hello! I could do one of them getting around. <laughs> They're very lovely things they are. So there's so many distractions around here. Um, and uh, I had this very strange experience. I was just walking along here. I and mean, like I said, it was very late. I've got to be careful because there's people all around here, you know. Oh my goodness. I'm sorry, I'm just enjoying the scenery for a moment. Oh, that was naughty, Ben. Stop it, stop it. Stop it, that was very naughty. Um, as I said, um, I was walking, I, I've probably reached about this point, and I was walking along here. Now, as I said, there's no artificial lights on these rivers, apart from a few lights in the boat sheds. There's some lights from the boats. There's usually a boat moored down there too, and there's lights on that. There's a house up here as well. Now, this stretch of the river, this, these few hundred yards, is extremely dark. Extremely. And um, when you, whenever I get to this bit, I get a little bit of a shiver. You know, it's, it's only to be expected, you know. Um, when you're going to walk into a very, very dark stretch of the river. Now, what I saw when I was going along here was um, I, saw so I saw what I saw was a strange thing. Now, I describe it in the blog as like a chalk outline. And that's what it looked like to me. It was a, a chalk outline, humanoid in shape. Um, arms, legs, head. And it was standing on the just where that woman is there. It was standing about there. And I was standing where I am now. Remember, it's dark, it's late at night. I'm walking in this direction. And I saw this, like a, a, a chalk outline of a, of a man standing there. It was about the same size as a human as well. And I basically stood, I stopped in my tracks and I uh, wondered what the hell I was, what the, what the hell's going on. And, um, Immediately, it's, it started, it moved away from me, down that tow path, um, running, almost, I saw his legs moving, it was running. Um, now that's, that's, and it, almost before long it disappeared, it disappeared just either around the bend or it dematerialised, I'm not sure. Uh, but I just, I stood still for a couple of seconds, I almost walked back actually to, the, to town and got a bus, I was that frightened. But I carried on walking, and I was scared. I mean, it wasn't like the other experiences I had. I was scared, maybe because of the situation I was in. That this wasn't home, this wasn't my bedroom, this was... This was like a real event. And um, I, carried, so I just carried on walking down here. And I wrote about it in the blog. Now, what did I see? I call it the river ghost, but again, when we use the word ghost, we're talking, I think, about several different phenomena that may, not, may or may not be un, or related. They may or may not be related. I'm not sure. But um, this is very, very strange. Um, it's very, very strange. These very, very strange things happen to many people. Now, firstly, the first thing I realized was I was at the confluence of the river, where the boathouses here stand. It's on an island. It's a triangular shaped island. Go to Google Earth and you'll see it. Uh, where the River Cherwell splits into two streams and joins the River Isis here. Um, river confluences have always been powerful in terms of etheric energy. I mean, anyone who's into ley lines, power grids, things like that will know that that's the case and that 
Conf river confluences are often places where these things are seen. And I saw this at a river confluence. Um, now, what was it? Now, immediately what struck me was that this was not a completely unfamiliar experience that I heard about. It was the first time I'd experienced it, but it's not the first time that it had actually I'd heard about it. Um, there's a very, very good writer called Jonathan Downs who runs the Centre for Fortean Zoology. And there's a Lynx column. There's a, if you go to the Herpanwo blog, Lynx column, you'll see it. And he wrote an article about something called The Beast of the Bolam Lake. Beast of Bolam Lake. Now, I'll, I'll put a link into the article if I can find it and put it in the description box. All right, but the, the Beast of Bolam Lake was where people reported a hairy man beast it running round a lake in a forest in an area in a beauty spot in Northumbria called Bolam Lake. Now, um, now, hairy man beasts, you think, well, these don't, things don't, can't possibly be in, in Britain, you know, they'd be found out, you know, in Himalayas maybe, in the Rocky Mountains perhaps, but not in Britain. Well, the thing is, what you've got to realise is there's, it's this big, Jonathan Downs talks about this, he calls it zooform phenomena. He see, this is what he thinks they are, rather than, you know, literal physical creatures like us. But that's a big subject, it's too big to cover here, but I will may, I may cover it in a future video or article. Um... And what happened was he and, he and his team went up to investigate. They brought him a large number of people with them, um, cameras, video cameras, and they parked their cars on the, river, on, the, on the path that was leading into the woods. Now what happened was they saw, there was a loud rustling sound from the, from the trees. And um, if you, as, you, if you, as you'll read in the article, they saw a large black shape, man-shaped object run across the path and run back again at superhuman speed. Now, um, obviously, it, it, it's, it's like, it, they describe it as like a cutout, a completely black blank cutout in space-time. Um, now, that's exactly what I saw. It was, it was, it was, there, was no, there was no solidity to it, it was just like a gap in... completely black with, like, white chalk line around it. Very, very, very strange thing indeed. It, it, you know what it was? It was like The Saint. Do you, do you ever see a programme called The Saint or The Return of the Saint? It's quite old now, so you probably won't see it much. But The Saint is uh, where, where the, the titles have this, like, matchstick creature. It's this matchstick man with a little circle around his head because he's called The Saint, so he has this, like, halo. And that's kind of what I was seeing. That's like what I was seeing, you know? Um, and... Um, now, what, what are these things? Now, now, Jonathan Downs has his own theories about what these objects are, what they constitute. Um, I think they're... It's impossible to say, actually. I mean, I really don't know what they are or why they happen to be seen in this world. They're not... One thing they are not, they are not flesh-and-blood creatures. They're not necessarily aliens, in as we know aliens from flying saucers. Um, they are... Something we have yet to understand, but my guess is there's some kind, like I said, there's some kind of linking, some kind of bleed over between our our universe and others. See, we come a bit of a way now here. I mean, on, on the day I walked down here, quite frightened, anxious to get home. See, we're at the bend, this is the bend in the river. You go around there to the right and you get Donington Bridge, which is near where I live. Um, I've never forgotten it. And I do come down, I still walk down here at night. Um, I'm not trying to do that. And in the day, I'm... Okay. So I just thought I'd share that with you and add it to my repertoire of ghost phenomenon videos. Um, this is, is a beautiful place. It's just an absolutely beautiful spot. Just look at that, see? Oh, here comes the old coach on their bikes. My dad was walking along here when he was a kid and one of these guys fell in. <laughs> it's really funny. But as you see here, they... They're getting ready for the old bumps races. And this is um Wait on the inside something. hand. Yep. It's a beautiful, beautiful area. And I love it. I'm I'm moving house soon. I'm at the end of July I'm moving into staff quarters at the hospital where I just get a single room and share kitchen and bathroom and everything. Um I'm gonna miss living here. I'm gonna miss walking along this river. Not like I can still can, but not as often as I used to. Anyway, thanks for watching Hapanmo TV. Hospital Port as pride and dignity stop the New World Order.